Here we go. Saturday matinee, 1 o'clock start. Knicks against the Blazers out for revenge. And from the start of this game, I already knew these boys were ready to go and take this W because the Knicks starters leading on the defensive end went at these Blazers relentlessly on both ends of the floor. Yeah. And despite a furious comeback by Anthony Simons and company, the Knicks found a way to get it done, led by their big three, RJ Bully in his mid-range bag, Julius in his double-double bag, typical night, but it was once again an aggressive performance by the Burner Man, Alfred Payton, with 22 points, seven boards, going at Dame Dollars relentlessly, attacking a, a, uh, a weak Portland interior defense. And hey, man, when, when we know when Alfred gets aggressive, good things happen. Nine and two now when he makes over five points, over five buckets, as Alan Hahn said. Knicks get the W. 110 to 99. This is Nick's post game live. CP, Ashley Moss, JLS in the building. Yep. JLS, mm. talk to me, man. Nick's get another W. Sixth place now in the East. Revenge yes, sir. is ours. Talk to me, man. What you like about this game? Talking about play in. You talking about playoffs? I don't know. We'll see. We'll talk about it. Yeah. Anyway, I'll say this. All right. Like you said, soft paper tissue, interior defense from this Portland Trailblazers team. 50 points in the paint. No problem for the Knicks. Yeah. First yeah. check for us. Uh, second check for us. Uh, shooting around the 40 percentile, 40 percent mark from three. Mm -hmm. Also good for the Knicks. We can try contributions from a bunch of Knicks. Even Alfred Payton hit a three. Even Pretty Alfred Payton hit a yes. three. Yes, yes. Ashley Ashley promptly tweeted me that <laughs> Alfred Payton hit a three. <laughs> Alec Burks seemed like he was coming back to life and hit yeah. a couple of threes as well. And so did Randall and company. But also it was the defense, man. It was the timely defense, you yeah. know, because uh, the Portland Trailblazers were going off from three. The second quarter, Knicks held them to 20 points, which is pretty pivotal. And That's then in the fourth quarter, again, the Knicks, after going on their run, leading my 15 points, kind of kept Demi a little in check. And yeah. the Portland Trailblazers didn't hit a three in the last eight shots of that fourth quarter. Yeah. And that's yeah. why we won the game. High octane offense, man. This Blazers team averages 115 points on the year. We were able to hold them to 99. Ash, mm -hmm. were you, what were your key takeaways in this game? Listen, when you're playing a team like Portland, they have shooters and shooters shoot and they enjoy having the entire court to do so. And the only way to stop a team that has shooters like this, especially when your shooters are very inconsistent, is you have to make it as uncomfortable for them to shoot as possible. And that is exactly what the Knicks did today. They were on them like white on rice, like peanut butter on jelly. And it was just making them real uncomfortable to take the shots that they normally can yeah. get up with no problem. The defense was impeccable. They were not letting them breathe they were not letting them get the shots up that they're used to making and it was making it hard for them to adjust because all the shots that they are used to having available were unavailable so those second and third options for them just weren't hitting and yeah. that is where we shine because today or tonight wherever you are watching this um our second chance opportunities were golden and that is what i love to see you know i always say and clyde was saying it today defense is your best offense and today the knicks were playing both sides of the ball complimentary basketball all the starters had points the minute they got on that court everybody was sharing that ball everybody was doing that part their part it was the first time all season that the star all starters scored while they were all on the floor. So that is what complimentary basketball yeah. is, and that is basketball at its finest, and I love to see it. Good, good points, good points indeed. And yeah. and as you mentioned, the defense and them getting after it. You know, it, it's funny when we have, sometimes when we have these shows and callers call in with a question, and then sometimes you see it play out in the game. Dan from Long Island last episode asked us about Bullock. You know, what did Tibbs see in Bullock and what he gives him out there? And I thought you saw that on this play today. I mean, he was all over it on the defensive end. They had him mostly on Trent Jr., but... He can guard, you know, different guys. He could have guarded all five of those Portland starters uh, tonight and, and really gave us an effort. You saw in the third quarter him block a three-point attempt. Yeah. Um, cutting without the ball, JL. Splash a couple threes. You know, obviously you want him to shoot more threes and, and hit more. But Bullock's versatility on the defensive side of the ball is what Tibbs likes the most. And I thought we saw that on display today. No doubt about it. Yeah, man, absolutely. You know, we know we want Bullock to shoot more, but the defense really shined through today for him. And I get on him for his, you know, 
lack of shot making at the end yeah. and <laughs> and his bad decisions at the end. But I got to give him credit when credit is due. He played well today, even though he didn't score the way you know I would particularly want. He did hit a few threes for us early and he contributed to his win. Yeah. Yep. And listen, let's not even talk about who was hitting shots that they shouldn't have been hitting or they weren't hitting earlier in the season. I mean, I know we're going to talk about Peyton later on, but I tweeted, I tweeted Jay Ellis and I meant it. You know, I don't think Frank is going <laughs> to touch that court anytime soon because it's yes, bleak. Look, yeah. it's, it's looking bleak for our guy yeah. because although, you know, Peyton has a long way to go to change a lot of our minds. I think his performance today, the last game, is enough to stick with for Tibbs to stick with yeah. him. And I would be surprised if you see Frank touch the court anytime soon. Yeah. So and yeah. and and speaking of the whole Peyton quickly dynamic, you know, it was an interesting and pivotal <laughs> point in this fourth quarter where um Anthony Simons had it going. And this was the matchup I was looking forward to as well, that that second unit matchup between Simons and Quickly. Um because it was on display in that first matchup and Simons is a bucket. He's he's an absolute microwave. So yeah. here it is in the um in the fourth quarter and Simons goes on a nine oh run by himself. Cuts the, the lead to five points. Quickly comes back, he splashes a three in Melo's eye. Then gets yeah. a steal, passes it to Bullock, and and uh, and then Bullock lays it in. The Blazers then sub in Dame, and Tibbs subs out quickly and puts in Peyton. So, you know, yeah. Nick's Twitter wasn't really feeling that, day, uh, Jay Ellis, but you know what? In the end, it, it turned out to be to be the right move. What would you think about that sequence? I mean, we won, and that's all that matters. Yeah, yeah right. Um, <laughs> it, it's, it, it's just one of those things where we won, but it's like we, we were on 106 points for like forever. <laughs> and you just hope that, you know, if a scorer was out there with the rest of those guys, maybe that would have been different. Who knows? But we won at the end of the day. At the same time, too, when quickly dig, because, you know, Tom Thibodeau got nervous, too, because he also noticed that we were on 106 points for a, a while, CP. Yeah. And he subbed IQ back in the game. But yeah. Randall was uh, was playing point Randall. Yeah. at that time and he wasn't giving up the ball to iq so then it didn't kind of not that it didn't matter but i guess he was like well i just might as well go back to defense since randall seems like he just wants to take over the game and the chips fell where they were yeah Knicks ended up winning but um you know I, i'm just glad we won even yeah. though I, I still don't i still don't necessarily agree with the decision but we won so it yeah won, won the game but you know listen peyton had it going man peyton had it going from the jump and like i said you know dame was coming off of a strained abdominal didn't play in in the uh the thursday matchup between the blazers who beat philly shorthanded um so they were coming in hot but peyton realized that went at dame all night and there was no interior defense I, we started the game off putting cannon in the pick and roll trying to expose him early and yeah. uh and that was basically what set the tone and, and they just kept attacking led by Peyton and and so you know he deserves the credit tonight I put him on the cover of today's show he gets his yeah. first he gets his first yeah cover. So and I mean job. listen yeah. as we know Cantor's not much of a rim protector so Peyton yeah. was really able to you know drive it in the paint and get to that basket freely without much you know hesitation or much yeah. of a fight right. from Cantor so that matchup mm -hmm. also helped him mm -hmm. in this game too he looked really sharp and and um, just, you know, in it and elusive and things like that. And an interesting stat, which I didn't know, the Knicks are eight and two when Peyton has five or more yeah. field goals. And at the end of the third, he had seven. Yeah, so nine and we two. are now nine, nine and, and two, two every yeah, time yeah. Peyton has five yeah. or more field goals. So that's an interesting stat that I actually was not aware of. So. Nine and two, 11 and 13 on the campaign and sitting in sixth place in the East. So, uh, you know, those are, that are in the P word, we are right in the thick of things, right in the mix. Um, Ash, you also mentioned Canna. I thought the Mitch versus Canna matchup was very interesting. We, we yeah. know Canna's Kana, been here. You know, we know how he gets down. He, he's still a bully in that paint, Jay Ellis. He still gets his boards and can get yep. those paint buckets. He, he had a couple plays where he, you know, out-muscled Mitch, but uh, I thought the Block Nest Monster Elbow. battled out there. Yeah, <laughs> just shifting him out the way with that elbow. Yeah. But I thought Mitch battled 10 boards today. Overall, the Knicks on the boards, 51 rebounds, eight on the offensive side. So it was a good battle. Good battle between Cannon and, and Mitch. Yeah. You know the song Jay-Z, Big Brother? I mean, Kanye, yeah. Big Brother? Back mm -hmm. when I used to like him. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he went, he, went, he went left. I'm sorry, he did. Yeah, he but did. anyway, <laughs> that's, that's the song that plays in my head when I watch those two because I know those two played a lot when he first got here. And 
you know, Mitch's post defense, he, his first practice was against Enos Cantor bullying yeah, him. So, yeah. yeah, so I know, like, that's how he got his feet wet. But kudos to Mitch. Yeah, he, he, he played well all game. The 10 rebounds were big. He battled him. And at the end, I think he forced a turnover in the closing minutes of the game. He mm-hmm. forced Mitch to to, call, um, to kind of fumble the handoff for Dame towards the end. So even though... Even though um he got Cantor got um some some the better in a few times, Mitch held his own and he forced some turnovers himself and he contributed to the Knicks win. So yeah, I like what I saw from Mitch today. Yeah, yeah definitely. Get, yeah, yeah. And also, I mean, the Knicks have I think we're leading the league in fewest turnovers this season. If I read that correctly, Knicks I want to say are turnovers. They are 13. fifth. They're fifth. So okay, still so good, we're still fifth. good. Yeah, still so good. So top five, yeah. and you know today that trend continued we only had four turnovers i think in the first half compared to the trailblazers who i think in the fourth quarter alone they had five so our defense was definitely putting the pressure on them to go ahead and turn that ball over and i just think that this overall now there was an instance and i want to say the last five minutes of the fourth where you know dame started to get a little hot the trailblazers Mm -hmm. started to just pick up speed speed or steam or however you want to say it that happens when you're playing a team that has shooters they just happen to run out of time and the opportunities that they did have they didn't take Mm -hmm. advantage of but overall i mean the knicks played a solid game today so i'm definitely impressed yeah Uh, uh, agreed agreed um second unit uh, i think what came stuck out to me the most quickly second quarter i I thought he he was a maestro out there you know again that that matchup with him and simons um he you know he was a maestro out there jail so i just loved the way he was running the offense um he had one sequence where you know he he kept simons on on, like was able to seal him off driving to the lane Mm -hmm. yeah found ties and a nice uh nice pass and I thought quickly really, really led us well in, in that second quarter. Alec Burks had an outstanding game off the bench, 16 points, eight boards, 4-9 yeah. from downtown. That's exactly the type of game that you want from Alec Burks. 27 minutes, and whose minutes did he take in that second half? Yeah, we see. Austin Rivers. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> yeah. Austin yeah. Rivers. That too, huh? Good mm-hmm. job, Tibbs. Thank you, Tibbs. Thank you. Need you to breathe. You may want to Yeah, he right. needs like, a little breathing, man. Yes, yeah. yeah. Take a, you know, look, learn from the bench. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, like that's it. Learn from the bench. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Ash, Ash what, what you think about that? You know, no, no second half minutes for Rivers tonight. I think, you know, Tibbs is the type of guy, unless you're Peyton, where <laughs> yeah. you got to earn him. <laughs> You know what I mean? You got to earn them. And, you know, I say joke, I say jokes about Peyton, but to a degree, Peyton has shown that he is somewhat of a, a contributor to this team. He has earned his minutes. And listen, Rivers is hot, but then he's not. And he's too inconsistent for Tibbs. Inconsistent. And I'm okay. And I'm okay with it. You yeah. know, I just feel like when Austin Rivers want to sh- wants to show up like he did in Utah, then you can go ahead and get your minutes back. But until then, you've been worse than you've been good. So, if that's, you know, the probability is not in your favor, the scale's not in your favor, rather, and we have more bad games or mediocre games from you where you're really just occupying minutes, you're occupying a space on the court, but you're not really contributing, then let somebody else who can do it do it. You know, right now it's not Rivers, and I'm perfectly okay with that. Absolutely, man. You, you know, Julius's contributions nowadays is just becoming so automatic that uh, yeah. we rarely speak on it. But I got to go with, again with RJ, man, because in this game that I'm watching him, it just looked like he could do whatever he wanted to do. Uh, the free throw line mid range was money. Getting into the lane, the, the bank shots off the drive was money. His passing was on point. Three pointers, he was on point today. You, you could just really tell he was just in a nice rhythm all day, really. And RJ finishes with. Um, 18 points, 7 boards, 8 of 14 from the field. Hashtag 9 God two in the chat. Hashtag 9 God. Uh, Ash, what would you see from RJ today, man? What would you like about Hashtag his game? Hashtag 9 God <laughs> in the chat. Put some respect <laughs> on my guy, He's RJ Barrett, own, the coming Maple Mamba. He is coming into his own. He's becoming the player that I know and I've always known that he could be. I've only been hard on him because it's tough love. I'm so excited to see RJ just just flourish into this player that a lot of people did not think he could become because of his slow start and his rough rookie season. But listen, RJ is really starting to figure out how he fits. And I know you saw my boy hit that three. Okay. It was nice. I know you saw him. It was nice. But listen, I think also the thing with RJ is that outside of how he's playing, I think it's also his character is starting to grow as a player. And that's impressive too, because you can see that he doesn't get as rattled. No. as I think that he can't shake. Him. 
it, you can't shake him. His focus is there. You know, he's not he's not easily moved by the things that are happening or not happening mm-hmm. on the court. And that's what's also impressive to see. So somebody came to me, I think somebody tweeted out and I resp- and I responded that I completely agree with it. Is RJ, you know, a contender for MIP this year? Absolutely. Somebody wanted to say, well, he's not even the most improved on his team. Julius yeah. Randle is. Listen, Randle, you know, all-star, all game. I'm already voting for him, vote for him every other day. Well, every single day rather, but listen. MIP RJ Barrett, no questions asked. JL, uh, this is a tweet from Tommy Beer. Over the last 13 games, RJ's shooting 51% from the floor, 43 from three, 80 from the free throw line, averaging 19, five and three. Yeah, I I think I said the last game, people were concerned that he wasn't hitting threes. It was two games where he wasn't hitting threes. But I think I said the last game that he's been hitting his threes ever since that the Brooklyn game where everybody was trashing him because he wasn't playing well. So I need, need y'all to calm down, not be so short-sighted sometime, pull back and look at the big picture. But RJ is balling right now. He's seeing the floor in slow motion, and he's making plays more and more. And it's just the progression is beautiful from, to see from RJ. And if he keeps this up with the – you know, with the growth of Julius Randle, with the growth, the growth of IQ, Knicks, man, we're, we're heading the right direction, man. Right we're direction, gonna have some right. pieces. We're gonna have some nice pieces going forward. We, we might, you might make some noise towards the end of the season. You don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. Where's the window? Where's the window, CP? I like it. I like it, man. Right. Well, I'm gonna just keep, you know, one game at a time. One game was, at a time, was, man. Well, just win the ones you can win. How do you guys feel? How do you guys feel about the RJ MIP talk? Do you think he's a contender? Do you think he should be considered? Or do you think that Julius Randle is that guy? I'm, I, you know how I feel, yeah. RJ all day, but I'm biased. I don't <laughs> think I don't think they'll give it to Julius. I don't think so. I don't uh, think so. He, because who's I mean, contending. Who's contending right now? Like, if if I if I had to pick we, between RJ and Julius, yeah, it would have to be Julius. But yeah, not that's not to say just by impacting winning. Yeah, you know, with the yeah. assist numbers, um, I would have to be Julius. You, you know. But I mean? can you can you be an all star and MIP? Like, is sure. that is that a yeah yeah why not? Well, yeah, why mm-hmm. not? I don't know. I feel like that's somewhat of a contradiction. An all star to me is somebody. Yeah. If it, it's if it, if it's his first time, he's you know if he makes it, mm-hmm. he makes it. You know, he, he kind of earned his bid, so. 